the next uh, feature that I wanted to introduce, um, I'll, I'll actually first go through the, the core functionality that was introduced in version 39 of DHS2, and then talk about the web application that was uh, released shortly thereafter and is available in 39 and, and now in 240 as well. Um, this is the data exchange functionality. So in version 39 and now 40 as well, um, we have the ability to submit or, or send data from one DHS2 instance to another, as well as to transform data within a particular DHS2 instance. This is a very powerful feature, particularly when you have multiple instances spread out within a country or maybe multiple countries reporting to a global instance or those types of workflows, and because it allows the uh, user of the, uh, the downstream instance to um, configure and then review a submission before it gets sent to the upstream service. And then it, everything else happens behind the scenes. So the configuration uh, needs to be happen to say this data element should go to this data element in my target system. Uh, and then I want to review that before I send it. And then I can click go. Um, what we'll talk about in a minute, which was introduced in the uh, shortly after the 39 release and is now included in the 40 release, is the ability to review that data in a, in a visual user interface. Uh, and then click submit to, to actively submit it. Um, I'll talk also a little bit about the, the functionality of transforming data within a particular DHS2 instance. Um, this is incredibly powerful because it supports tracker data as well. So you can actually transform a program indicator uh, into a data value in the DHS2 instance, and also do that across the boundary between different DHS2 instances. So you could submit the, the program indicator uh, output from data that is collected in the tracker data model, and you can then put that into a, an aggregate data model within the same instance or in a, a, another instance upstream where it can then be, be compared with other, with other data um, without needing access to the individual level data. So this is again uh, just describing what um, uh, what what is happening under the hood there. Uh, importantly, you can run this ad hoc, which we'll talk about how you can do that with the new data exchange application, and you can also run it as a scheduled job. So it just happens automatically behind the scenes without any user needing to to interact with or 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 review it. Um, it always the target is always aggregate data model but you can start from either aggregate or tracker, which is very powerful. So this is one way to aggregate tracker data into an HMIS instance, for example. So if you have a tracker COVID-19 uh, vaccination tracker and you want to uh, basically aggregate the, the total number of vaccines delivered by age group and then send that to the HMIS instance where you want to store just the, the aggregate total numbers, you can do that with the aggregate data exchange app and the tracker data stays in the COVID-19 instance and the, and the aggregate data lives in the HMIS instance. So there are many other use cases for this. Um, data portals are, are also, or, or public data access is also another one where you want to send and review only the specific data that gets sent to a separate DHS2 instance, particularly for public data access uh, for security and privacy concerns. That is possible with this functionality as well. And uh, again, the value of uh, pre-computing program indicators and sending those into the aggregate data model is quite powerful. So this is what the application actually looks like. This again was introduced after uh, DHS2 version 40, 39 was released um, and it's uh, available for both 39 and 40. Um, it's available on the App Hub and what it allows you to do is to review and submit data for one of these data exchanges. So once the, the exchange has been configured within your DHS2 instance, you can review that data. As you can see here, you're reviewing the, um, the different uh, organization units and the, the actual data for, for different periods and different, um, uh, in this case, um, data elements that you are uh, want to submit to the upstream system. And then you click the submit data button and it allows you to to actually perform that submission. Again, you can do this. This is the way you can do it manually or ad hoc, but you can also schedule this to run on an automated basis if you don't need to review it every single time. 
Um, but this is very helpful for being able to review that data and then submit it. Um, this is useful also for, for global reporting from countries to, to international donors.